All right, going to take a minute or two here to reply to uh, this Tommy McMurtry guy. And he's coming out with these videos attacking dispensational preachers. And here he has a guy up and I'm next. I'm going to show you something interesting to prove that this guy, Tommy McMurtry, is not a real Bible-believing Christian. Let me show you. That you must rightly divide and uh, you must obey the commands of God when it comes to that or you're going to, be a, you're going to be a mess. You will make a royal mess of the scriptures. Again, I have a study on uh, non-dispensational Christian contradictions. Uh, the, the Bible is a complete total mess if you do not rightly divide it. And I'm afraid that's exactly what they're doing because it doesn't say you'll have a mess. It just says you'll be ashamed. And so what? Okay, you're ashamed because you make a mess. Uh, you're, you, know, you have children and things there. I'm sure that uh, when the children make a mess in their pants, you know, and things when they were really young, they're ashamed. You know, I have to, what's the big deal? Okay, oh, well, well, it doesn't say it make a mess, you know. Okay, but, but check out what he does here, right? It's supposed to be a King James only, King James Bible believing preacher, but he actually changes it because he can't handle rightly divide. So he changes it to, because rightly divide is just so archaic and so hard to understand. So he changes it to help out his non dispensational people and uh, actually changes it to a new version, new version reading. Watch this. What does that term rightly divide mean? We only see it this one time in the Bible. But that term rightly divide, very simply, I believe, means just to correctly present the scriptures. Whatever scripture you're teaching from, you need to make sure you're teaching it correctly. Okay, correctly teaching. What he's saying there, teaching, you have to make sure you're teaching it correctly, correctly presenting it, correctly teaching it. All right, that's what he's saying. Now, I don't think that he's secretly uh, some kind of an agent for the Vatican or some kind of a deal like this or whatever else. Uh, he's just a brainwashed Baptist. Uh, most of these guys are, and they think the Holy Spirit is speaking through them, and it's actually an Antichrist spirit. I mean, he believes he's going into the time of Jacob's trouble. He's anti-Israel and all, all the stuff that these Anderson clowns are, you know, coming out with. But look at this. Here you have 2 Timothy 2.15, Christian Standard Bible. Be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. Correctly teaching, exactly like McMurtry just changed the King James Bible to say. I mean, who doesn't know what rightly dividing means? Dividing is separating. You see two people fighting, you say, hey, we need to divide these two people. Divide and conquer. Okay, divide means to separate. You look at the scriptures and you say, Old Testament, New Testament. You know what? I don't think that they're doing the same things in Old Testament as they're doing in the New Testament. It's two different things. It's not rocket science here. But you see, the these false converts, and I do call them papists, these you know, papal Catholics, because they get a lot of their stuff from the Catholic Church, like replacement theology, and the church has to go through a final time of purification completely right out of the catechism. They believe in the Holy Trinity, just like the Catholic Church does. Um, they don't believe in the God, biblical Godhead. But that's why I do say that they are Catholic. But, uh, you know, I just find it interesting that the, one of the biggest things that they have to get rid of, you'll never find a Catholic that's dispensational. Never, ever, ever, ever. Because they have to say the whole Bible is for them. And that they are, they are the interpreters of the whole Bible. And God used the Jews in the Old Testament, but now it's the, the church, Christ's church, you know. Yeah, and that's what these guys are. So they have to get rid of dispensational preaching and teaching. It's the most important thing that they need to do. That's why he's so rabid about this thing. And I'm going to show you this one. This one's really funny. Another one here. The meaning of the word dispensation. Now here, you know, I don't teach that the strongest verse, you know, teaching dispensational truth about rightly dividing, I don't teach that that's Second Timothy 2.15. Um, the strongest verse on dispensational teaching is Ephesians chapter 3, that passage there. And here he's trying to go through it. All right. And look at the look at the verse, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now that's just as plain as day. And you can just, I mean, a, a child can read the Old Testament and the name Jesus isn't there. Nobody's saying, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he was buried and rose again the third day. That stuff's not even in there, right? He said, but Abraham was justified by faith. By faith in what? By faith that God was going to give him a son in his old age. 
by faith that God was going to provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. You say, well, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Yeah, you can understand it now, but Abraham didn't understand it. Abraham didn't say, oh, oh there's the ram and that, that's Jesus. And he dies on a cross. And even Jesus, his own disciples, just a, a reading through the gospels. And Jesus is explaining to them how he's going to die on the cross and be buried and rise again from the dead. And they're saying, huh? Huh? And then Peter says, you know, be it far from me, Lord. No. But they're saved by looking forward to the cross. So it's satanic heresy that these guys are teaching. No, it was a mystery that was kept secret um, all throughout the Old Testament. There's glimpses of it there. There's some Isaiah 53 is a prophecy of, of Jesus dying to pay for sins. Certainly. But they didn't understand it. And even after Jesus dies on the cross, he told them what's going to happen. He dies on the cross. And some of them are starting to see Jesus you know, resurrected. And a lot of the other ones are still not believing. They're still saying, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if it was an Old Testament teaching, the gospel's always been the same. They would have been, oh, well, sure, yeah, Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, we've known about that for generations. Stupid nonsense. But let's, let's listen to a little bit of this. And again, he'll add something to Scripture here. He comes up with a totally new term with no basis in Scripture at all. Check this out. And prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift. The Gentiles are partakers. They don't replace Israel. Continue. Of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of of his power. So what Paul's showing right here is that, hey, I was given this mystery. I was given this dispensation. God used me to reveal something that was hidden in the past. Very good. See how, you know, he'll tell the truth, but now he'll, he says, okay, that's the truth. It's clear right there in the scriptures, but I have to twist it to be part of the Anderson Club. Okay. Watch. It was there, but it was hidden. God did not use Paul to bring another gospel. So we are not under Jesus' ministry today. You have to understand that. We are under Paul's ministry. But God used Paul. Okay, and that's true what Breaker said there. Breaker got it from Ruckman. Um, but again, you know, they're, they're using Breaker as a, as a, you know, putting him in there. You know, all oh, this is, he's a dispensational. Breaker's got all kinds of problems. He preaches a false gospel. So, but listen to what he says here to reveal more things about the original gospel. God gave Paul more information that Paul was able to give to other people, but God gave more information about what was originally there, even in the Old Testament. In <laughs> um, okay, the original gospel? What on earth is the original gospel? Right? And it was there in the Old Testament. See? They were saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Kind of makes you wonder why he had to come and die on the cross if people were already getting saved by something he didn't even do yet. <laughs> okay, so, um, but Tommy McMur McMurtry there, get it out, yep. Um, three questions for you because you're doing these little moments here or whatever else, you know, thing like Anders Snake would do. Okay, three questions for you because you've named me in this thing, so I have every right to come back and say, hey, Three legitimate questions. Number one, question number one. I assume you believe in the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ and he will rule and reign for a thousand years physically on the earth. Not in symbol, you know, symbolizes the church or something. No, he himself will physically rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. I assume that you believe that. I hope you do. <laughs> okay, that's so what the Bible teaches. Revelation chapter 20 teaches that. Um, is salvation in the millennial kingdom the same gospel as we have today and it was there for the uh, old testament as well as you say um is it salvation by grace through faith and how does that line up with hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 okay answer that one question number two um, matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46 the judgment of the nations after the second coming when he comes back in other words he comes back destroys the antichrist army goes into jerusalem and he's there to judge the people that made it through the time of jacob's trouble um does he mention grace, salvation, by grace through faith as a, you know, 
something you know whether they're going to go to heaven or not or go, or go to you know be cast in the lake of fire is, is grace through faith the thing that he decides whether they're saved or lost okay question number three the mark of the beast um, since you teach that salvation is always the same okay uh, somebody in the great tribulation to use the terms that you would use um, they get saved by grace through faith they're now eternally secure they've been given eternal life um, what happens if they take the mark of the beast okay according to Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 11 anybody that takes it goes to hell you say well they won't take it okay then how does that work out with first Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 that says if any provide not for his own especially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel I'd like an answer to three of those three questions okay thank you for watching